What's up guys, it's me AG and today it is another sunny day here in beautiful Rome, Italy. We do plan to explore Centro Storico, which is where the Pantheon and the Trevi Fountain is. It's the city center of Rome. We're gonna hit up a few classic uh, Roman places, some pizza, some pasta. I'm sure it's gonna be a fun day. But first, I'm kind of craving some coffee this morning. So let's hit up a legendary cafe. Let's go. So quick stop here at Santo Stacchio Il Cafe. It's been here since 1938, so you have a pretty good institution. Got my coffee, got my croissant. Perfect way to start today. So what you do is you order at the counter, then you bring your receipt and have it here at the on the counter opposite, so you don't have to pay the cover charge. So I just got a pistachio croissant and their Gran Cafe, which is their specialty. You really need a coffee right now. Strong. Got a bit of sugar in that. Very nice coffee. Next up the pistachio croissant. Absolutely filled with the pistachio cream. Mm. It's like kind of zingy as well. A bit more marzipan in flavor. It goes really well with the coffee. All right, that was a nice coffee and pastry. Now on to the Pantheon. So we're just standing in front of the Pantheon right now and it's just a miracle. It's an absolute miracle. After 2,000 years after its construction, it's still standing. It's still a complete building inside and out. From the front as well, like the imposing Corinthian columns, just the sheer voluminous, just the amount of concrete in front of me right now. It's just, it's just a sight to behold. So when you enter the Pantheon, the first thing that strikes you is the dome. It is the most striking feature. and. It's honestly, the more you think about it, the more miraculous it is as a feat of engineering. It is still the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the world. There's like a really nice skylight, and I, I reckon like at some parts of the day, when it shines to the bottom of the Pantheon floor, it would just look so magnificent. Also, I mentioned a while ago how it's like one of the best preserved structures from the Roman times, but it's at the same time, it is not surprising because I get, like one of the best ways for you to be, be preserved as a building is for you to get converted to a church. A lot of the Roman temples fell in ruins, a lot of the Roman theaters, race courses fell in ruins because they were no longer in use. But the fact that the Pantheon was converted from a pagan temple, pagan temple into a Catholic, into a Christian church, meant that it continued to be used and that's why it's still surviving today. It is actually still a church today. I was just reading one of the info boards and it even stated that the dome is so amazing, such a feat of engineering, is that if, if they try to recreate it today, even with the materials and techniques of the time, they don't even know if, if they could do it. That's how, that's how impressive the dome is. That's how impressive the engineering behind the dome was. So that was the Pantheon for you guys. So we're currently on our way to the Trevi Fountain, which is prob probably like the landmark that I'm looking forward to the most. I'm very excited. Can I look now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's from Boy Oceanus! Wow! <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> okay, so we're here guys. I'm very excited. Always got teary eyed for a bit. Don't judge me! But yes, as you can see, the main feature of the fountain is not Neptune, okay? It's my boy Oceanus. And no, he's not a god, he's a titan god. And he is the true personification of the ocean. Wow, knowledge, baby. The actual fountain is very beautiful, especially at the time that we've gone. The, the sun is very striking to the eye of and the way it shines on the marble. Very nice. I like it a lot. I feel like this is the style of art that I like to see. That's why I like it so much. That's it. Because if you look at the church, like the churches from St. Basilica's and the church before that, like if you notice, I was always commenting on the statues and that was it. <laughs> Baroque and Renaissance architecture is Yandy's favorite now apparently. So it's tradition around here to throw a coin uh, to grant you safe passage back to Rome. But we're not going to do it right now. We're going to come back another time just because it's a bit crowded. And you know, I kind of want to do it when the lighting's <laughs> a bit nicer because, you know, Instagram. But uh, yes, we're going to just roam around a bit more onto the next spot.
All right, it's lunchtime and we're here hitting up a legendary pizzeria, Antico Forno Roscioli. They serve pizza by the slice, you know, your typical Roman pizza. They have a lot of flavors. It's kind of similar to Bonchi, but they also have other stuff. They have a bakery, they have uh, uh, like passes and stuff. They got soupli, arancini, pastries, they've got it all. I'm super excited. This is a legendary place in my Rome food bucket list. Let's go and let's eat. Uh, smaller, smaller. Yeah. And this one. It's done. Yeah. Pumpkin, sausage, and cheese. Okay, I got it. And then. Okay. How many? Two. And then. Alright, we got a bit of a mountain of pizza. We got, I think, more than five flavors, six, I'm not sure. I'll see what else we got. We're gonna, I think we're gonna go back to the hotel and eat it because it's a bit, like, it's gonna, it's gonna get messy. There's no escaping the messiness if we eat outside on the tables. Well, it's barely a table, it's literally like a bike cart on top. So, let's go to the hotel. Alright, we got six flavors of pizza and I still feel like I missed out on a lot of delicious other flavors. But first, let's taste their plainest pizza of the all. Well, it's not their plainest pizza of the all, but one of the plainer ones. It is just pizza and tomato sauce. Oh, mm, that is good. Wow, what the heck? It's so simple, but at the same time, it tastes like it has more to it than it does, but it's only tomato sauce. The the crust of the pizza is like, it's a mixture of the paper thin bottom, and then you get that spongy top layer, then the very saucy tomato sauce, wow. Like the tomato sauce has a, has a thicker texture than it seems. It almost like provides an almost meatiness to it, to be honest. Like who knew that a plain tomato <coughs> slice would be this good? Next up is a pretty thick boy, if you can see. Ooh, look at that. This one looks like it's got some sort of cheese and tuna. Also, probably some artichokes, I think, but I'm not sure, but it's definitely the, the bread is much thicker here. Mmm, that's a good pizza. Wow, I've never actually had tuna on pizza before. I've always been turned off by the idea, but this one, I don't know, I really like it. The combination of that, that really nice neutral cheese and the, the briny tuna with those artichokes. It's a pretty good unexpected combo. The bread here is like, just because it's so thick, it's like so fluffy. It's not dense at all. It's like quite light actually. You can see like the little air crackles and bubbles in the middle. It's like a, it's like a pillow for that cheese, artichoke, and tuna. Ugh. Amazing. All right, next pizza on our list looks like it's got cheese, some ground meat, which I had no idea what it is, and it looks like cauliflower, I think. I think it's cauliflower. Let's taste. Wow. Who would have thought? Who would have thought cauliflower on pizza? Oh, if this was on cheap pizza, it would be not. Nah, that would just be disgusting, but this, the high quality ingredients that they use, the high quality crust, just everything about it is so high quality that it's just, it's an unexpectedly good combination that I really like. Ooh, I hope you heard that crunch because that was so crunchy, that crust. All right, next pizza that we're gonna try looks like cheese and some caramelized red onions. I actually almost mistook it for like um, some cold cuts, some like capicola or something, but it, it was red onions. Let's taste. Mm. Oh my. The onions on that are just next level sweet. What the heck? Like, is there honey in this? Like, it does not taste like it's got honey. So they, it's either just got some sweetener that I don't know what it is, or it's just that caramelized that it just transforms into an almost like candy like, like pork skin thing. That's just so amazing to eat. Mm. It's actually like insane how sweet that is. I've never had onion this sweet. Well, that onion pizza was so amazing that I almost wish I ended with it. But on to the next pizza. 
All right, next pizza is something similar that we had in Bonchi. It's like, it's a, it's like a porchetta pizza, and it's layered. It's double layer, layered, so it's got a layer of potatoes on top, then the porchetta, and then the like pizza crust. So let's taste. Mmm. Oh, that's amazing. They did such an alpha move here. Like, the potatoes on top are almost so crispified that they almost have the texture of potato chips, but the bottom layer of the potato is like your normal roast potato. Let's get that, that texture game going on. And the porchetta is herbaceous, very delicious and fatty. And then the bottom, like, you know, the crust is very good. Wow. It's a pretty, like, this is a pretty alpha combination. And that pork is like one of the best roast pork you'll ever have. Mmm. Mmm. That crunch, oh. it's like the crunch, the softness, the porkiness, and the crunch of this crust. All right, last pizza, pizza that I'm having. It's literally as as I walked into the as I, as I walked into the pizza place. It was the first thing everyone would advertise. They'd be like, "Oh, pizza bianca e mortadella," and I was like, "Oh yeah, I I kind of want to try that now." So you know what pizza bianca is? It's literally just. Their plain pizza base, drizzled on with olive oil and some salt. It's literally just like, just bread. But apparently it's really amazing. But I got it with mortadella because they, they, they said that it could come with it. So you know I couldn't resist some mortadella, or as the American Italians say, some mortadella. It's practically it's practically a pizza sandwich. Like the the, the mortadella is sandwiched in between two pieces. I, I, I don't think it's two pieces. It's like, it's one piece of bread, but they like sliced it in half. So let's taste. Mmm, it's pretty good. Mmm, the mortadella is like really high quality. You know the pizza bianca. That is just such a nice bread, even by itself. And I can already tell. I know I'm having with the mortadella, but I would happily have that bread by itself. I think what I love about the pizza bianca as well, it's just it's got the the, the crust is super paper thin. Like the crispy part is so paper thin that it immediately gives in that spongy light interior. It's really like a well-executed bread. Also, just as a little side, we got some uh, soupli, you know, your classic Roman street food. Um, it's filled with rice and tomato sauce. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -mm. No, no, it's very comforting. Crispy. Crispy outside. Contrasted with the almost gooey and just soft inside with the rice and the tomato sauce. That tomato sauce is very nice. Very comforting. So yeah, that was Antico Forno Roscioli for you. Incredible pizza. Um, we're just gonna rest up in the apartment for a while before dinner, and we'll see you guys in dinner. So we found a restaurant. There was a bit of a line though, so we've been waiting for around 20 minutes now, but I think we were about to get a table. It's called Dark Ferretaro. I think they um, specialize in seafood, but since there was people lining up, that's a pretty good sign that it might be a good place, so hopefully it is. All right, so we've made it in, and it is a bustling place. I love the decor and the feel of this restaurant, but I didn't realize when I was looking at the menu, literally their only main is the fried codfish, so you know this is their absolute specialty. So we just got four of those some salads and some sides. I hope it's good. I mean, you can't really go wrong with some fried codfish. Almost reminiscent, almost reminiscent of like, you know, fish and chips back in New Zealand, so I hope it's good. For some simple fried zucchini, the batter just looks super golden and crispy and just mm, looks so nicely fried. Why would you eat the whole thing? Okay, it wasn't that hot in the end, but you know, that's a pretty solid fried zucchini. The batter is super crispy, light and golden. Can't go wrong with deep fried stuff, can you? Now some little mushrooms, that's what it said in the menu. It looks like it just drizzled in oil and some um, like chili flakes. Mm. You know, it's simple, it's meaty. I think it's a bit of a vinaigrette, vinaigrette oil. I'm getting a bit of acid there. You know, it's like it's your, it's your like simple, normal meaty mushrooms. Can't really go wrong. All right, let's taste this beautifully fried piece of cod. Mm. 
I clearly haven't learned my lesson about hot fried food, but that was a really great piece of fish. Well fried, flaky, sweet, succulent. Oh yeah, that ticks all the boxes. Well, you know I live in New Zealand. All I'm missing now is some potato chips and some Wadi's ketchup. All right, time to taste the salad. It's a Roman salad, but I literally, there's only like one green in here, but I have no idea what the vegetable is, but it also comes with anchovies. All right, the man said to drizzle some olive oil and some white wine vinegar, so I will do just that. Oh yeah. That was the oil, now the vinegar. Very nice. I give it a bit of a mixy mix. Incorporate all those anchovies, those oils, this mystery green that they've got going on here. I have no idea what vegetable this is. But I hope it's good. Mm. Mm. Very interesting vegetable. It's like crunchy, vegetal, and slightly bitter. Like the white wine and the olive oil is a very good addition to this. It just gives it that extra, that extra bit of flavor. And the anchovies, that salty brininess, elevates the the salad to just makes it much better. I'm just gonna do a little bit of an English here. I'm not sure if this is a Roman faux pas, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Some white wine vinegar. Gotta put it just to counteract that acidity of the fish. I know the English like to do it with their malt vinegar, but we'll see if this works as well. Mm. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty good. That white wine vinegar is a bit sweet and also very acidic. Cuts that fatty batter very well. So that was dar filetada for you. Literally a one trick pony, but they do their trick really well. You know, this is, the, this is the type of restaurant where you go, if you know what you want, this is where you go. Just incredibly simple, but yet well executed food. All right, dinner may be over, but the night is still young. It is dessert time and we are craving some gelato. We're gonna hit up one of the most popular gelaterias in the city of Rome. Um, this is, it's called Gelateria della Palma and has over 150 flavors. Bit overwhelming, but let's go. All right, I am internally panicking right now. I, I am incredibly indecisive. Like, br bring me to a food court. I'm just gonna panic for 15 minutes while I 15 minutes while I choose. I I don't know what to do. I don't know. <sighs> Come on, I need to make my mind up. Got my flavors. I got three. I don't know why I do that to myself. So I, on the top, I got speculoos, which I believe is just like a like a type of biscuit that they have in Europe. And then the white one is like rice and milk, which is very interesting. And then, you know, in the bottom, had to get it, pistachio. Time to taste the speculoos. Very good, has that like nice and biscuity, like almost honey-like, multi flavor, very sweet. It's not as like thick and like almost clay-like, like the other gelatos we've had. It's a bit more icy, but not like too icy, so it's still pretty decent. Time to try the rice and milk. I, I mean, I get that like slight milky flavor along with that crispy rice, on like rice puffs. It's very sweet though. So this one is a pistachio cream. It looks very good, I hope. I mean, again, they're very sweet. Like, I can actually taste like the sugar, which you don't really like <laughs> in a gelato. Oh, okay. Yeah, these are like quite sweet. It's a bit more of like a aromatic type pistachio, almost like they put some kind of like essence in it. But you know, it's good. <laughs> it's just really sweet. Okay, since they had 150 flavors, I kind of went for like the weird ones. Well, the weird ones in my book. First one is chili chocolate. I do like chili chocolate by itself, so let's taste it by itself. Okay, that's actually like really spicy. Like, not, not, not even joking. Uh, if you couldn't handle spice, don't get this. Because this is the spiciest chili chocolate I've ever had. Okay, not gonna lie, the chocolate flavor is like... <laughs> <laughs> the sugar is getting too much. Oh yeah, my bad. Chocolate flavor is okay. And like, it's a bit icy. So I don't really like in gelato. But you know, I guess. Yeah, not a good start, but... <laughs> that 
the heat is creeping up. Mm. I don't know, this is like a, an episode of Hot Ones. Wow, hot ice cream, that's a very oxymoronic term. Next up, lavender. Like, I, when I saw it, I was just like, yep, yeah, that's weird. Let's get it. Yep, that's lavender. It almost, yeah, it tastes like exactly like lavender. There's even some like lavender seed pieces in it. You know, it's it's kind it's kind of refreshing. So if that's your thing, then you know, get it. I'm gonna be completely honest here. Um, I wasn't really expecting much because like I, when I knew that I, they had like 150 flavors, I was like, surely they must compromise on like quality somewhere because you, you just can't do that. Like, you know, if, if you're doing it artisanally with this, you know, like. Uh, just a lot of flavors really well. I mean, I guess if you know if you're looking for the weird flavors, then go to this place. But if you just want like a solid you know, pistachio, fior di latte, stracciatella, just chocolate, or just like the basics, I don't know, probably just go to like Benki, Grom, or like your actual reputable um, gelato places because it's okay. It's okay. I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm not saying it's the best gelato I've ever had either. All right, we made it back to the apartment and it was a pretty fun day today. We just saw the Pantheon and the Chubby Fountain. Amazing sights. Obviously, it's a must-see. And they're, and they're both free, so, you know, just obviously you can go anytime you want. Antico Forno Roscioli. Mwah. That was some beautiful pizza. The porchetta as well. I think that might have been... No, not... not porchetta was my second favorite, but the onion. The onion was... Such an underdog, but it impressed me so much. It was probably my favorite one. We went to Darfiletaro. Uh, it was actually surprisingly good. Even though their menu was deceivingly simple, their fried cod was well executed. Great vibe at that restaurant and a decent price for that food. Cannot wait for it tomorrow. I have no idea what we're gonna do tomorrow, but I'm sure it's gonna be fun. Um, thank you guys for watching another one of our food and travel videos, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Shut up.